Rumour has it Canon are developing a global shutter with quad pixel AF. Let's look into that. Hi, I'm Tom and you're watching Rumour Has It. Please subscribe for camera news, rumour and informed opinion. It's free to subscribe and it helps the channel grow. Today we're looking at why Canon are working on a global shutter and why that's important to them. But first a bit of historical context, then an explanation of why it might come, followed by a quick fix solution to rolling shutter, if you can't wait for the R1. Rolling shutter is an age-old problem that's been with us since the early days of film. It troubles us right up to the present day. The problem was originally due to the actual shutter mechanism on the early film cameras, which rotated in front of the film, and that's why it's called a rolling shutter. On the modern digital sensor, this translates to the scan speed of the sensor. Imagine an old CRT TV tube where the electron beam is scanning down the screen. This is effectively what happens in reverse with a modern sensor as it reads the image into the processor. Due to the time it takes to read the sensor, the subject can move, and this is why we still call it rolling shutter effect to this day. Here are some examples which you might have experienced. There are two basic approaches to solving this. Speed of scanning, that is sequentially reading the lines faster and faster. This has been the main approach and one that's been successful for Sony with the A1. But the holy grail has always been a global shutter. A global shutter solution removes rolling shutter entirely by grabbing a full frame readout instantly. This has actually been achieved and exists on cameras like the RED Komodo, which has a global shutter and it's derived from a Canon sensor. However, in the past, CMOS based global shutter technology has been plagued by issues like sensitivity and noise. The technology relies on memory cells which read the data being passed from the sensor. This affects the sensitivity by increasing the space between the pixels. Also, the memory itself introduces fixed noise patterns, especially in shadow areas. So why would Canon still be pursuing a global shutter when sensor readout speeds have largely solved the problem? Interestingly, some early digital cameras didn't suffer from rolling shutter because they were based on CCD technology. However, CCD technology was expensive and the DSLR market moved to CMOS-based sensors even though they were prone to rolling shutter because they were used less power, meaning batteries lasted longer and the CMOS sensors were cheaper to make. This left the more expensive CCD sensors in a niche market of scientific instruments and specialist cameras. Both CCD and CMOS were based in 1960s technology, but now there's a newer technology like stuck sensors and BICMOS, which claim to offer quality and low noise of CCD sensors and power consumption and low cost of CMOS without the rolling shutter. Canyon have researched this technology and developed patents since 2012. The reason for doing this, I believe, lies with another patent that Canon are working on, this time for Quad Pixel AF. Let's look at what might bring these technologies together. Canon have led the field with the Dual Pixel 2 technology and the impressive AI algorithms that give it the edge. The others, most notably Sony, are catching up. So Canon are keen to maintain their advantage and are developing a quad pixel technology. To explain how quad pixel compares, dual pixel technology is like binocular vision with two images side by side and it zeroes in on the focus. Quad pixel adds another dimension to this in the vertical, giving it 3D vision which should allow superior tracking. When dual pixel technology was introduced, it did impact on dynamic range and low light performance, but the trade-off in focusing was worth it to many. These drawbacks have improved in recent sensors, and this has been shown by the increased dynamic range and finer focusing on eyes and animals in the R5 and R6. 
I believe Canon are designing a sensor that brings these two technologies together. A global shutter with quad pixel AF. If they can do this with little or no impact on dynamic range and a low light performance, they could have the next gen technology on their hands. If we look into technology advances like BigMOS sensors, this helps us to understand some of the rumoured specs for the R1. This is an abstract from an article on the BigMOS. These avalanche photodiage emiss sensors are designed to overcome transistor-induced noise limitations of solid-state image sensors at low light levels. These APD image sensors are built on the BICMOS process. This could explain the oddities in the recent rumoured ISO specs for the R1, which were 160 to 1,630,400, a strange number and 15 and a half stops of dynamic range. It may be that the additional interconnections that are needed for a quad pixel global shutter are limiting the lower ISO numbers, much like it did with dual pixel was introduced, but the advantages in low light, noise, tracking, focus and speed of shutter brought by the new sensor technology mean it once again worth the trade-off. Time will tell. What do you think? Have the rumours gone too far? Or is the tech right around the corner? Let me know in the comments below. Now for the quick fix I promised you. For anyone who can't wait for the rumours to come true, here's a quick solution to solve rolling shutter on even the slowest cameras. Turn your camera vertical and the shutter will then be travelling horizontally, thereby resolving the issue when you take a panning shot. Thanks for watching Rumour Has It, I hope you found this useful. If you did, then why not give us a like and subscribe to the channel. And for my part, I'll continue to bring you camera news, rumour and informed opinion. And now to the subscriber draw. Currently there's only 40 subscribers visible to me, so that's cut the odds to 1 in 40. I'm using a random number generator app on my iPhone and I'm set, selected a number between 1 and 40. So I'll just press the button and the number is 30. So I'll look down my list of subscribers in chronological order to find the 30th subscriber and I'll list that down below. So some lucky owner <laughs> of the AC battery adapter eventually gets it off my desk. Good luck and uh, I hope it's useful to you.